Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my backyard. This time we're going to be slicing up uh, this piece of white oak that's got uh, a lot of knobbies, a lot of crotches and things going on here. So it's uh, kind of a gnarlier white oak log. So a couple of reference videos for you. So the first off is going to be a video where I took out my log trailer for the first time. That's my new trailer I just finished building. I picked up uh, the lower section of this tree as well as this section which was the upper section of that. So if you haven't seen that already, you want to see how this log got to where it is right now, I'll leave you a link to that video. The second video is going to be the one where I cut up the lower section of this tree. So if you want to see the lower section, which was from here on down, if you want to see that get cut up, I will leave you a link to that one as well. That was a fairly, fairly large log. This one is still pretty big, but it's uh, quite a bit smaller than the last one. So as always, let's take a quick walk around the log and see what we're dealing with and talk a little bit about the orientation and stuff like that. So first off, some dimensions. Uh, on this end here, uh, across this direction is 34 inches. It is eight feet long. One, two, three, four, two foot bunks, eight feet. This side here tapers down to 26. We got a little bit of a taper on here. And then we have several uh, crotches and things. So we have these two larger limbs, which are right there, around this side, we have this limb here, this one here, and then like half of that guy. We also have what looks like the start of a little burl area there too, so that should give us some somewhat interesting figure, at least right there. Now the biggest thing to note on this log is going to be this area here where the, uh, the living part of the tree, the sapwood, was completely blown off. So. As we kind of speculated in the last videos, this was probably struck by lightning. So uh, that kind of blasted off <laughs> all the living portion of the tree along its entire length. So this actually was contributing, I think, to a lot of the decay in the, uh, in the tree, a lot of the dieback, because uh, this whole part of the tree wasn't pulling anything up to the, uh, the upper canopy. So in order to make this make the most sense, I think, I'm going to roll this thing so this is on the bottom and that will basically eliminate that section as part of the waste area of the sawing. That's going to, oh, well, it's going to create some more kind of bullseye type of patterns out of these limbs. Maybe a little hint of crotch figure here and there, but for the most part there won't be a whole lot of crotch figure from these guys. Now one last little note about this is that since this has that big limb down there and it's got a little bit of taper, we're gonna to have to pick up this end to level things out. But first, I'll roll it over and then we'll see where things kinda of end up and then I can level it then after I have it laying in roughly the right orientation. I can always roll it a few degrees left or right to kind of change up the figure a little bit. But first, I wanna get the, uh, the waist area down more towards the bed. I think that went uh, pretty well and it actually managed to sort of level itself out so I don't have to uh, pick up this end anymore because it is sitting there pretty level. So I think it's going to work out pretty well. I got that uh, scarring pretty much along the bottom here. It has a little bit of a twist in it but it's mostly towards the bottom. We'll expose a bit of this burl figure here as we come through here. And we'll get a little bit of interesting things off of this limb here and that big one over there. And as we get down there, we'll have a little bit of crotch figure. We're at a little bit of a downward angle versus being nice and straight in, but that's what it takes to remove a defect. <laughs> a little different than how I normally do things. Normally I try and get the best figure by, I don't know, for variety, we're going to try and eliminate defects. Alright, so since this side was being dragged on the ground and now it's right as my blade enters, you can see all the dirt here. I'm just going to grab a hose and rinse it off real quick, get some of the dirt off, and then we'll set the first saw cut to come in right around here.
uh, see what we got here. Got some bullseye action on this guy. Ooh. <laughs> Couple of uh, serious bullseyes on this guy. And a lot of just kind of clear white oak stuff. So there is the, uh, the top kind of bullseye. We got a little figure towards the top of it. Come down through here. We got the other kind of bullseye thing going on here with uh, some figure on top of this guy right there. And we're getting a little bit of figure on top of here from the limb that was in, uh, in that area over there. So with that first cut out of the way, I'm gonna go through and start uh, the cutting process and uh, keep cutting until I run out of throat depth, which I think should be, oh, let's see, probably five slabs or so. Yeah, we'll see. Let's take a look at this guy. Whew. That was a bad toss. <laughs> I've lost my touch. Pretty cool grain happening around these, uh, I guess they're knots now. <laughs> I don't know, that's, that's cool. <laughs> figure. <laughs> and we got a little bit of figure up here, again from the limb that was right there. So we're getting a little more swirly green here on top of uh, what's left of this limb. We're gonna be through this pretty soon. And we got a little bit of what must have been a burl at some point that the tree grew around. And then down here, we got a lot of figure around this guy. Oh. 
lots of stuff going on around there. I think because we're going to get through a lot of these limbs as we get towards the other end of the log or the other side of the log, we should start seeing things become a lot clearer so we'll have less uh, defects. All right, here we go. <laughs> that was heavy. Ah, oh. man, that's gorgeous. We're starting to get into some ray fleck around these knots. Look at the figure around these things. We're still getting some curl around there, but now we're starting to see a little bit of ray flecking around there. If you come down here, you can see some more, a little bit of ray fleck around there. That definitely used to be a burl at some point. <laughs> And I think as we pull back this one, we should be through most of this stuff. So things are gonna get a lot clearer here, I think. You can see where I, uh, I paused to move the camera. <laughs> Ooh, that's cool. There's a lot of ray fleck in this next one here. As we're getting into the uh on area, ray fleck, all that. see a lot of the ray fleck here coming out from this limb. There we go. So we got some ray fleck around there. Getting really clear. Really clear. And we got a couple of the remnants of those two limbs right there. And we got some ray fleck emanating there from this limb here. Hey, there's a burl. <laughs> we got a little bit of burl action here too. And a free leaf. <laughs> Looks like uh, this one and then the next one will be the most quarters on. I can already see a lot of ray fleck there. Oh, wow. Well. That is a lot of ray fleck. <laughs> I can't explain to you how much fun this part is. <laughs> Who would have thought throwing water on wood would be that fun? So now we're like really getting into the cortisone area so you can see a lot more larger reflex. You got a lot more coming out around here. A little tiny bit here. This is more closer rifts on, but as we get towards the outside, it's closer to quarter. Some bigger reflex down here too. Big stuff. <laughs> All right, let's grab some measurements on this guy since it's probably going to be the widest one of the set. All right, at the wide end down here, we're at uh, 32 and a little bit between the bark. Up the middle, it's a 30. And down here, down to 26. Eight feet long, and I'm cutting these at uh, nine quarter which should give this thing, well, they're not that big, like wide, so they don't need to be cut as thick. Nine quarters will still give plenty of material there for flattening and surfacing later on. Now, one thing I am seeing here are a lot of uh, wormholes. So this is actually worms or woodworms infiltrating from that uh, wounded area that's up here. So they're able to come down and through into this area of the tree so I have some bore care here, which is just a borate uh, insecticide solution that I can spray on here just in case there is anything still living in there. Don't really want that. Where I'm at here in Minnesota, it's not as common to have a lot of insects in the wood or especially insects that enter wood after it's been sawn. Um, so if you are in an area where that is more common, it might be something to think about if you want to prevent preventively treat wood, I more like uh, tend to treat stuff that uh, I happen to know has something going on. 
which is more reactive, I guess. This does this is some big reflex on here, like real big. <laughs> if you like big fleck, I got some big fleck for you. <laughs> like real big. That's some big stuff. Water. <laughs> oh, that's cool. That is cool. We are down towards the pith now, so we have a lot of these early limbs from when the tree was just a wee little baby. Baby tree. Baby Groot. So uh, here is the pith of the tree, that's the center. So you can see the, uh, the young tree growing straight up through here. It's always cool when you get down this area, you can see like the history of the tree. So uh, let's see what we got here. We got some pretty wide ray fleck all through here. You can see it's kind of like a zebra striping kind of thing going on. That is your quarter sawn grain pattern. And as we get deeper in here, we're probably gonna see more and more bug holes as we get closer to this, uh, this area here. Bugs are going in. <laughs> well, there's some more of that ray fleck over there. That is looking good. So I will throw this guy into the stack and then it'll be time to roll the rest of the log over. Half a grub. <laughs> Critters. All right, that's the last four slabs. And uh, as I was sawing, a little friend was showing up right here. Hello, friend. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you can see they, they're starting to come out of the wood. So, prefer them to be out of the wood than in the wood and, you know, alive. <laughs> oh, here's another one. So we got some uh, wormy white oak. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna grab these ones and get them stacked and we'll take a look at them and that'll be it for uh, this guy. All right, we got a little more uh, quarter saw and ray fleck coming through here. That's a lot of, a little fleck. A little bit of the original tree. <laughs> what, just a little baby wee little tree. And we got some nice light fleck on either side here of the, uh, the pith. And a little, hello wormy. <laughs> ah.
Oh, this wormy stuff is kind of cool. It's got its own type of character going on. So we got uh, plenty of wormholes, especially as we get out towards that uh, big wound on the outside of the tree. So we got you know, a little bark inclusion there. Lots of little holes here from little worms and stuff. But otherwise, fairly clear stuff. There's some interesting things like this situation here. And now we're starting to get away from the quarter sun, starting to get more rift songs. So very faint ray fleck as we get towards the outside of the tree. I'm starting to see a little bit of decay around this uh, limb here. It's a little bit of rot staining there. Of course, we got some rot staining here around where that, uh, that where's that wound thing? This thing, whatever. <laughs> That's some rot staining from around there. So obviously there's decay in the tree because we got these little guys eating it. Yeah, okay, it's really hard to do one-handed. <laughs> Trying to get that sweet POV action. <laughs> ah, yeah, so we got some more, uh, you know, more stuff we saw last time, some more decay, some more rot, plenty of wormholes, plenty of worms. <laughs> Pretty cool looking stuff, though. I think the, uh, the wormholes do give it a nice accent that's for sure maybe you know without the worms that'd be nice so that is one beautiful stack of uh, white oak slabs uh, these are just temporarily stacked here obviously this is not proper way to stack lumber uh, these are going to be heading over to my new slab drawing the yard area which i'll have sometime next month so i will see you next month for the outro and the official here is a fully stacked pile of slabs uh, shot, I guess. <laughs> So here we are at one of my new stacking areas or stacking sheds, I, I guess. So I got a little carried away with the stacking and forgot I had to shoot this outro. So I already stacked this other stack in front of here. So this is some stuff you'll be seeing in the future. This is some leftover stuff from making workbench kits. Then I have the two white oak logs with the embedded metal that we tried uh, bimetal saw blades on. And then the log down here, which I just finished cutting. So, you know, there's a good amount of stuff in here already. Plenty more uh to get put away and stacked so on these guys here with the uh the worms in there the boric hair that i applied to the surface essentially kills anything as it's coming out and then anything going in would uh, consume that wood and die as well these will still need to be either heat treated or kiln dried uh, to kill anything that might be deeper in the wood uh, so that's another consideration as well that's going to do it for this one, another fun log. This one is going to join its big brother, or I guess bottom section, <laughs> eventually when that one comes over here to go into uh, some more drawing. So that's, uh, that's a lot of wood from this one tree. So thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on the sawmill, the new property, or anything back in the shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time. <laughs> Happy working. <laughs>